It's the end of the world as we know it, and I feel fine. Let's get out of here. I. Everybody, it's Aaron from Got a Minute. We are waiting for the soon rapture of the church and looking at all sorts of different things. Right now, we've got a solar eclipse to consider right around the corner next week. It, is the rapture going to happen on the eclipse? I don't know. Is it going to happen before? I don't know. Is it going to happen after? I don't know. Luke 21, verse 25. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Um, a lot of interesting things in the sun and the moon and the stars. So um, let's look into this Apophis thing and the stars and the constellations and all that. I'll probably put some screenshots in later. But um, NASA is sending up three rockets on the solar eclipse. On April 8th, nicknamed APEP, A P E P. Well, that APEP is another short form word for an Egyptian god, Apophis or APEP. You can watch lots of video on that. Uh, but Apophis essentially is one who represents darkness and disorder. It looks like a snake, it's like uh, the Lord of Chaos or whatever, and it's like an evil dragon. And so this is the Egyptian god. So why would NASA name these three rockets after an Egyptian god of darkness and chaos and death? It's the god that would be in constant conflict with the sun god Ra. And uh, the sun god would be represent the day. And I guess this snake, Apep or Apophis, would rep represent the night and darkness and the underworld and just all sorts of nonsense. Why is NASA naming that this? And, uh, you know, they're putting it up there just to, I guess, to examine the the particles in the air. But whatever, that's besides the point. The point is, they're that's what they named it after this Egyptian god. So some points here. Um, what did I write here? To destroy. Oh yeah, it's always trying to destroy the sun god. The number. The second, other point I wanted to say is Apophis asteroid. The Apophis asteroid is beside the eclipse. So if you look at Pisces. It's right beside the eclipse. So we've got the sun, the moon, in Pisces, and we got Apophis just to the right underneath that Pisces. I think that is a very interesting connection there. So not only do we have a bunch of rockets flying up in the sky during this solar eclipse, we have a asteroid called Apophis, which is another way of talking about this Greek god, the serpent. And this is happening while the eclipse goes over little Egypt. And um, so we go over to the plagues of Egypt, and this is all in Exodus. And all the plagues represent Egyptian gods. I can drop this PDF in the video, but uh, every plague kind of represents an Egyptian god. And um, it seems to go to, to, like, as the plagues are going, it's going higher in the importance of the gods, ending with kind of like the, the raw god and then the... Uh, Egyptian plague going over and ultimately overpowering the Pharaoh God. But um, in Exodus 7, here's an interesting thing here. We have Aaron's rod destroys their rods, but the rod is turned into a serpent. So I think before the, even the plague start, we have this a transfer of rod to serpent, which for me at this point now, now that I understand about this apep, uh, Apophis God, uh, Aaron's rod destroys their Apophis God, essentially, by the symbolism of the snake. The snake is a symbol of this Apophis God, which represents death and the underworld. Um, but the thing is with Aaron is Aaron is a bit of a type of Christ, right? So Moses is kind of like a type of the father. It actually says that uh, in the Bible. It says that you will be to Pharaoh as, as a God kind of thing, right? So where is that? That's in... Uh, so Exodus 7, so the Lord said to Moses, see, I have made you as God to Pharaoh and Aaron, your brother shall be your prophet. So of course, uh, Moses is not God, but there's types and shadows in the Bible where it kind of like, uh, you can say that, for example, Joshua was a type of Christ or David was like a type of Christ or whatever. There's always a, a types and, and shadows in a lot of characters. So the scripture says that, see, I have made you as a God to Pharaoh. Moses was kind of playing the part of the father. And so Aaron was sort of playing the part of Christ in this little story here. And then um, 
we have Moses tell Aaron, well, God says to Moses to tell Aaron, uh, use your rod to destroy um, the Egyptian rod. So I think that's pretty interesting because Aaron was a type of Christ and, and Jesus died on on a tree, on, on a cross, right? So it was Aaron's rod that defeated death because this uh, God uh, of, what's it called again? Um, Apophis kind of represented death, kind of represented the opposition of light. And so Aaron's rod defeats death. Isn't that neat? So Aaron's rod, who is a type of Christ in this situation in Exodus chapter 7, 8 through 13, defeats death. And in Hebrews 9, verse 4, we see that Aaron's rod is in the Holy of Holies. So, again, I think it's it's kind of a type of Christ showing us that Christ defeats death. We can see that through these, even studying the Egyptian gods, that uh, God conquers the Egyptian gods. God conquers death. And um, we have, like I said, the ninth plague was three days of darkness. So this is representing God overtaking the God of Ra, which was the, the God of sun, the God of light. And then the 10th plague is through Exodus 11 and 12, where um, the firstborn die. And so that's taking over the, all the power of all the Egyptian gods by doing that. And um, again, to kind of just taking over this Apep God, this Apophis God of death, destruction, chaos, disorder, um, and all of that. So to summarize this whole idea here, we've got NASA sending up rockets on this eclipse. This uh, God, Apophis, wants to destroy the sun and take away its light. Well, that's what the moon does. It takes away the light in an eclipse. And so... Why would NASA do that? I think we all know. But um, we have also this Apophis asteroid near Pisces beside the eclipse, during this eclipse. We also know that this is the year of the dragon. In the Chi This is the Chinese year of the dragon, and next year it'll be the year of the snake. That's another interesting thing there. So um, a lot, a lot of connections. The most important thing with all these things we're talking about is to get in a relationship with Jesus and accept the finished work on the cross. There is nothing that we can do to earn our salvation. It is only through Jesus and Jesus alone. As a result that, as a result of getting into a relationship with Jesus and uh, accepting that free gift of salvation, uh, our fruits begin to show if we've had a transformation in our heart. No, we're never perfect, but you do start to see the change in somebody's heart when they become a believer in Christ. So I pray that you become a believer in Christ Say I do to Jesus and let him transform you and sanctify you as the days and weeks and years go on. I pray that we get out of here soon, but until then, we got to keep on telling people about Jesus and waiting for his soon arrival, which I think is really close. Okay. Oh, yeah. And how about that CERN stuff on uh, April 8th? My goodness, they're going to open up that stuff. Yeah, let's get out of here, man. It's getting crazy. Sit down here. But anyway, I just thought I'd show you the correlation between this Apophis asteroid and the NASA sh setting up rockets, which is represented to this Apophis, Egyptian god of destruction and chaos and darkness. Mm, oh, yeah, and, and Islam, their, uh, their fast is done on April 9th or something on this total solar eclipse. Wow, so many alignments with this one. Uh, again, I don't know when the rapture is going to happen before or during or after. I do think that uh, late April around that Passover time is a really interesting time to be considering, but we're always just guessing and, and considering and, and uh, contemplating possibilities. All right, get in the word and love people. Go, Jesus, go. See you in the clouds one day closer. Hi.